I'll be talking about how we can generate uh, jobs and employment um, out of the passive house concept here in Ireland. Uh, Jonathan Hines from the UK will be talking about uh, how they're building passive houses in the UK at no extra cost and creating very healthy, uh, stimulating environments for children to go to school. And Adam Cohen, uh, who is an architect and also runs a design build firm, will be talking about um, how passive houses in the United States uh, are making a lot of sense in terms of, in terms of business. So, um, also, I think this session is very useful in emphasizing the fact that Passive House, which is the world's uh, most demanding energy efficiency standard, is not limited purely to houses. We have a strong um, uh, non-residential, non-domestic uh, link to that as well. So, I kind of, um, I was a little bit bold with my uh, title here. I said, you know, uh, put the planet on hold, save jobs first. I don't seriously proposed that we do that, by the way. I hope you can understand that, but just trying to say, look, we're in a crisis at the moment and it has to be about employment and so forth. Believe it or not, we have a great expertise here in Ireland on the topic of passive house, and I actually think that we could develop Ireland as a kind of a global hub, uh, as a centre of excellence, if you like, a global centre of excellence in passive house. We've got great expertise here, we've got great products, and we've actually also, we've finally graduated past the single family residential um, scenario. We're now building schools, uh, shopping centers, offices, and so forth to the passive house standard. So that's very exciting, I think. So I really think this is within our government to do it. I have a little company, myself and Art McCormack, uh, we have 14 employees down in Wicklow, and um, we had a, a traditionally an architectural landscape and urban design practice July 2008 came and I thought somebody had cut the telephone wires into the office. It was actually a joke for a couple of weeks saying, you know, is our IT down? Basically the phone stopped ringing, the emails started coming in. So we basically had to reinvent ourselves. And we looked across the big pond to the US. There's 300 million people there. They all speak English and the design standards for building, if you don't mind me saying, Adam, are not great. A little bit what we have like here. So we ran our first training event. We basically set up the Passive House Academy uh, um, and we were delivering training. We only started this time last year, in fact, and th this was the first class we ever ran here. We're on the banks of the Hudson River, and in that photograph um, are really the list of the who's who uh, from the Passive House community in, in the States. And so here we were, a little company in Wicklow, offering um, design and training services in there. Um, since then, we've actually completed 22 programs, I've been to the States a lot in the last year. Um, we've uh, delivered training um, in, in, in uh, Boston, in New York, uh, Texas, Chicago. Um, I was in Seattle 36 hours ago delivering a program and also in California. Um, we've we've uh, got the message out to about 460 people and we have a lot more training to come. And the point about this is it's not only good for our business, it's not only putting food uh, on, on our table, but these are 460 people who are now energized and enthusiastic and really have bought into the Passive House concept. Their future, conce their future customers for uh, producers of Irish products and for producers of Irish services. So we're trying to spread the word there. We recently incorporated into the States, so that was a big uh, step as well, but I've realized is you cannot offer services internationally from a little office down in Ras New. Uh, you have to actually get out there, you have to wear some shoe leather, wear out some shoe leather, and um, we've set up, set up now Passive House Academy LLC. It's not even a year old uh, at this stage, and we have employees on the ground. Uh, Bob Ryan on the right, who most of you would know, um, has headed up the operation there. So that's, um, again, a big step for us to have set up an office uh, on, on another continent. Um, we also are making world-class Passive House products here in Ireland. Um, if you get your product certified by the Passive House Institute, um, it's the equivalent of the sort of Oscars, if you like, in, in, in the billing products world. And uh, we have a very large company in Ireland, uh, most of you will know, called Munster Joinery. And they now have two of their windows uh, certified as Passive House windows by the Passive House Institute. As an Irish person, I'm very proud of that. I think they should be congratulated for that. And Passive House Institute have A, B, and C rated windows and the Monster Joinery ones are, are A-rated. So I think that's um, hats off to, to Monster Joinery. And the interesting thing is, there's nobody in the whole of the United States making certified Passive House windows. 
Okay, it's a market of 300 million people, and Adam will talk more about this in his own presentation. So myself and Art McCormack and Brendan Hart actually set up another company called Clearwall, uh, with the concept being that you know we can make windows as efficient as a standard wall, but you can look out through them, hence the concept of Clearwall. That company is only set up six months at this stage, and we've actually uh, fitted uh, passive house windows, Irish-made passive house windows, in five projects now in the US in the first six months of operation. Uh, we're competing very, very strongly on quality, uh, also competing on price, and also the technical backup. So when somebody buys a product from this uh, company, this Irish company called Clearwall, they're not only buying a window, but they're buying technical expertise in how to fit them. And there's lots of potential for other Irish companies, and there are other Irish companies exporting products to the US, and what I'm trying to say here this morning is maybe we should band together and, and uh, work together. So there's two projects now uh, in Virginia, both with uh, windows made in West Cork, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, we've also graduated, as I said, past the sort of single family. Uh, sing I, I built the first passive house in Ireland back in 2004. The Department of Education, their own architects, have done a fantastic uh, job now. They've built two passive house schools, one in uh, Wicklow and one in Moynalty. And I think this is fantastic now because we're now starting to get um, good projects on the ground, um, including this project here, another very, very fine project by Cabinet Chute at UCD, student residence. Um, and the, uh, in this photograph, I'm presenting um, to the architects their, their, their official passive house uh, certificate. They get a lovely plaque when, you, when you're building a certified as a passive house um, building. But what's very interesting, I think, in this photograph here is where people came from to see it. We have Canadians, uh, people from Long Island, Brooklyn, San Francisco, would you believe, and that's a hell of a long way to come, and also Philadelphia. In that photograph is a group of 17 people who came to Ireland to learn how to build passive houses. Can you imagine that? And we have another group of Russians. We have 25 Russians coming in June. Uh, to have a similar experience. So it, it's a kind of a passive house tourism, if that doesn't sound too lightweight. And these people are coming here, they're contributing to the economy, they're buying Irish services and they're buying Irish products. So again, hats off to the Department of Education and also to Cabinet Chewett for these great projects because they're actually very uh, important in bringing people to our shores. FOSS also has done an absolutely incredible job. FOSS came to the Passive House Academy about 18 months ago and said, we want to start training Irish construction workers in the Passive House um, standard. And to be honest, I nearly fell off my chair. I was so excited about the idea. And um, that we've since ran the prototype courses and they're actually being, ro they're being rolled out now um, uh, by the FOSS Centre in Finglas. So we actually have uh, Certif internationally certified passive house tradespeople now in Ireland who have a qualification in this and, can, and who can help you deliver um, your projects. We've also brought people from across the world here to Ireland to learn how to build to the passive house standard. That lady on the left uh, came from Canada and we have a team of people there uh, from Brooklyn and from the Bronx, from New York City and uh, Big Dave there in the blue, he, he came all the way from California. So again, trying to emphasize the fact that we have an expertise here, whether we realize it or not, in Passive House, and this is generating employment and generating jobs. There's also export potential closer to home. Um, we were very fortunate to get involved in this um, international research project, um, which is being collaborated and, and coordinated by a German company called IFAS, and that's actually the next step up, if you like, from Passive House, it's where we're talking about zero carbon communities. And we're doing a very interesting project in Ballinagran, uh, near where I live in Wicklow, in fact, where we're trying to create um, a zero, not just a zero energy community, but an energy plus community. This is a community that has too much energy for its own needs and starts to export that onto the grid. We've actually two people working on that um, project full time. We've one person working full time on Clearwall, and uh, what I forgot to mention earlier on is we actually have a, two people or two-person equivalents working on our US operations. So that's five people in an office of 14 who are working on international work um, and keeping us, uh, keeping us going.
It's still tough, of course. The end of the month is coming in a few days' time. You'll all be painfully aware of that. And um, cash flow is still a, a problem. But nevertheless, we're, we're very optimistic for the future. So what I would say um, in terms of finishing up is that, you know, we, I would say to get out there, to, to research the markets, whether it's the UK or whether it's the US or whether it's uh, further afield, identify your, your unique selling point. You know, you, you have to arrive at something a little bit different. Um, seek help. The Enterprise Ireland office in New York uh, was a fantastic help to us. We probably wouldn't be out there without them. And whether it's the Enterprise Ireland group or, or your local county enterprise board, there are great experts uh, there to help you. You also need to find partners. You can't do it by yourself. So it's good to collaborate with others. And take the risk. Just take the risk, give it a go, and um, it may well prove dividend. We're also trying to build a strong Passive House community in, in Ireland. We have the Passive House Association of Ireland. I would encourage everybody here to join that association because there's strength in numbers. We can work together and, um, and uh, form a, a solid uh, consortium. So please do visit the, the uh, website for the Passive House Association of Ireland and join if you haven't done so already. We have a strong connection with the US. I was sort of naturally drawn in that direction. And um, culturally and, and from a language point of view, there's a very strong uh, connection there. And um, as our O apostrophe Bama said on his last visit to Ireland, um, is failure then, yes, we can, we can do it. So that concludes uh, my presentation. Thank you very much.